All right, here we go. Totally the first take. We didn't mess up the intro the last time. Welcome to the podcast. Me and Jeremy Stud bringing it back for a new season. We got Doug Sensor Martin today. Welcome, my brother. You are a legend, a longtime friend of mine, and Jeremy Stud. Uh, I feel like we grew up together, man. So it's nice to have you on the show, brother. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me on the show. Thanks for all the kind words and everything. And uh, yeah, let's just get started. I love, I love talking. I love listening. I love these shows. So uh, it's always a pleasure when you guys reach out. It was absolutely no brainer. I couldn't wait to come on and and do one of these. So let's let's go. All yeah. right, let's get it, Dougie Fresh. Well, talk to me, baby. It's good to have you on the show. How's life, brother? How is life right now? Because you're looking like you're already smiling. Like you just start your day off smiling every day. How's well, life, brother? Well, I see Snoopy's nine and three are now playing in these SD shows with Vivid on the other okay. team. Shotzi, Dashy, Hugh. And I'm just watching the POV, looking at his centering, how much he doesn't use his right stick when he's turning left and right and up <laughs> and down. I'm just looking at all the little details, and I'm just excited for the future because I think he's got a bright future ahead of him. I think the team's gelling and flowing. Um, there's a lot of announcements upcoming and challengers that have a lot of us excited internally that we can't wait for others to announce. And I think the plan over these next few weeks is just going through these motions and stacking the days in practice and getting all the scrims under our belts and all the film sessions in and just having some fun when we play and seeing what the results are going to be because we're having a great time every day and uh, we just can't wait to play online. Can't wait for the matches and everything that's coming. Just loving Call of Duty and loving our jobs, honestly. So I can't complain. Uh, Doug, so that's awesome, first of all. Uh, and I know you've been teaming with a lot of different Challengers players and they, they go into league, they find success. Like you've been building some good squads. The most recent tournament, I know you guys played well. And I want to get into all of that stuff, uh, the recency stuff. But I want to start off by like rewinding a little bit. Uh, for people who, you know, learn about you and stuff like that, they might not know like all your past and, and sort of why you are the way that you are. So I kind of want to talk about that a little bit. Um, and we won't talk from the very beginning, but I saw you release the video and it was like, why some people think that you have an ego and you're like, well, it's because I do. I have three championships. I have a national champion and I have a top four champs placing. And you do. You were you were dominating for a while you won a lot of tournaments and you know what it takes to win so i want to talk to you about like let's start from there after that you retired why did you retire and when you came back like how was that process so talk me through like let's let's start there and then we'll, we'll go on um well it just was like you're talking like going back to ghost like advanced warfare times and well, those are the good times. Well, the, the, the those good are times. the good times, yeah. And, and a lot of people might not know about like uh, that time period, like when you mm -hmm. were at the top, right? Because a lot of people see you and they're like, "This guy's in challengers. He's delusional and this and that." But people forget you were a very, very, very good Call of Duty player. Uh, so I kind of want to talk to you about like your bounce back when you first when you first retired, and then when you first came back, uh, how you operated and navigated back to challengers. Um. It's you know it's just a process because it's it's so many times and I mean going in and challengers out in the league out the league I mean just to sum it all up it's ten years I could sum it up in like sixty seconds you know first year competing with national championship um, next year don't compete because of ESL with MW three next year winning Ghost win an AW that's three years and then have to retire phase do YouTube for three years come back in World War two and play call of duty for one year retire again come back in cdl boom that's the last 10 years right so that's crazy it, it's it's to sum it up in a nutshell that's the fastest way to do it but yeah i mean I, I always felt that at least like you know the last five years there was no movement at all you know you have the franchise league and yeah all this stuff but the first you know before that when there was no league it was it was very easy to climb the ranks because uh, it was always just who would win. It didn't matter about the stats or the kills or the deaths or the damage or the rotational, situational, hill time, percentage, equational, Pythagorean theorem. Like, what, what are we doing, man? Like, all that mattered was the win. So it was it was honestly pretty easy to just climb the ranks and win. So I felt it was easier back then to do it. But um, I think, you know, as time goes on, it just gets a little bit harder. There's a little bit more, like, weight pushing back against you. So you kind of just have to, like, take those those punches take a deep breath and uh remind everyone and yourself where you stand and why you got where you are so doug day. um you you stopped playing after was it dub dub 2 was when you stopped for a bit what game was it where you took a break to do youtube bo4 okay. that one year okay so you took a break after bo4 what i was getting at there and i might have asked it in a rigmarole way but when you came back <laughs> how did you climb your way back up to a decent spot in challengers 
what was the first team you're on like what did you have to do to get back into a good spot everything it was the worst dude oh my goodness there's gonna be a lot of different challenger people who watch this and look none of you guys could possibly have it worse than i did i promise if you guys think it's bad i have so many bad things and experiences that i could share throughout this entire podcast to make you guys feel better and motivate you guys because truly no one had it worse i had to deal with the stigma and the old age people have stigmas no matter how old they are who they are whatever but if you have a stigma and an old age that's like a death sentence it's it's mm -hmm. just like the worst thing to do with call of duty in Call of Duty, yeah, that's like, you're dead, man. You're chalked. Like, you're chalked before you even start. I had to spend the MW year not playing. I was contractually not allowed to play Call of Duty. I was signed to New York Subliners for quite a nice salary, more than I'm getting on Boston today, to do absolutely nothing and sit on the bench and not play Call of Duty. I was not allowed to play Challengers. It was in the contract that I could not play Challengers. So that was insane, and I just took a bag and did nothing. And then Cold War came around. You had COVID so many pickup teams so many bad teams it, it was crazy because like now in this current day and age uh you have boston academy and all this hype and all this stuff but you just go back a year and a half ago man like literally just one year and a half ago and just about everyone i was playing with every week was retiring like mm -hmm. i'd play with aches he would retire i'd play with yeah. Lacefield, he would retire i would play with um mir he would retire proof would retire joe destiny would retire Cade would retire like, man all these players that i played with literally just continuously nova that was another one i played with he retired as well every week and i'm like i can't get anywhere going up this 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 system i can't gain points i can't gain any traction people are going to think i'm trash i'm posting these clips of me like world starring these top challenger teams but it doesn't matter because i have no points because no one cares i was like this is horrible and then you fast forward a year and a half later of just me staying put doing the same things every day every day all i would do is just play a lot of cod and watch a lot of cod no matter what i would just always play a lot and watch a lot now a year and a half later everyone i play with is going to the league everyone i play with is going to the league you're going to the league you're going to the league oh here's another facetime of a teammate going to the league oh here's the general manager telling us this guy's going to the league oh this guy's getting a call from this team and they want to buy out for this player well this is like the oh norm man now, that's so. tough it's a much better situation to be in than that. And I never forget those days so, and it wasn't that long ago. So I, I just always take it with just, you know, a lot of gratitude and it's just a really good feeling to know that a lot of the people I'm playing with are getting chances and also doing well as well in the league. Yeah, so I think that's sure. also important. So, but, um, and Jay, I know, I know you got something to ask. I just want to get to this yeah. first. So that, what you brought up there, I had never thought about that, but that is a bizarre thing to navigate is like the circle that you came up with was kind of really on like their back leg at that point right and that's why you said a lot of them you were team with them they were retiring so when you're like forming your team you're like okay i want somebody that i can rely on right so you get like somebody that you know and that you trust but then obviously the challengers scene is a grind right so maybe some of them didn't anticipate how much of a grind that it truly would be so a lot of players life hits them and, and they have to retire obviously you're in a, a bit more of a fortunate position than a lot of other players right so a lot of people had to retire how did you navigate that like getting into the challenger scene like the other players because you have to get in their circle right there's so many players that i see like parasite playing with for example all the time and i was like who are these guys like this is a whole new circle a whole new generation and you have to like learn about them become friends with them and in order to really know who's got it right so what was that like after all the guys that you talked about retired obviously you're like at the head of stake now you know everybody so how did you get into that man it was it was like building from the square square one block one up again and and you know i just put out a little twitter video yesterday saying like i'm sorry i think my ego held me back a lot i always remembered the thing that always kept me staying successful consistently quickly fast was always remember like it was very simple for me it was always remembering why always remembering the reason why why did this thing happen to me how did this thing happen to me like reflecting self-reflection doing a lot of that would yeah. help a lot of people it's like it would tell you exactly why you are where you are today if you're not if you're overachieving, underachieving, or going exactly where you want yourself to go, if you do reflection and you just really think about the moves you make and why you do them and why they lead to where they are, it'll really help you with like where you could go moving forward. And I always felt that back then, the thing that helped me a lot was completely dropping my ego and having a lot of humility and just earning people's trust through time and commitment. Honestly, that was the thing back then. And today it was tough because in challengers, you can't really earn people's trust through time and commitment. You can't you can't just like grind eights with players every night the way we used to guys. Like today it's a lot different. Like teams are very political. There's a lot of stigmas uh, still. Uh, there's not really many eights. People are just doing their own things with their teams. They're exhausted after scrims. They don't really grind with other people, right? Like 
to break into these circles, it just takes a lot of time of just honestly beating these teams in scrims consistently. And then obviously at events, like doing well at events. I mean, last year in Challengers, we made a lot of big runs, you know? We got top six, we got fourth, we went to Championship Sunday in two of the three lands that we played. Like, we just got third at the last one, so... Making runs and getting towards the end of tournaments obviously means that you gain respect from the people you're knocking out and the players you're beating. So people start respecting you based off of your results. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, and is is the best way of gaining the respect versus everybody is just beating them and getting great results. And I felt like that was really the thing that helped me a lot to, to get where I'm at right yeah. now is just doing well. Like doing well on challenges is the reason why people respect me. Nice. Doug, I was going to ask you, bro, because obviously I've known you for a long time. We're former teammates. I used to be a coach of yours as well for a little bit. Yep. So it's just crazy to see that you are still one of these guys, one of those veterans of the scene, still put on a show, even though it's not where you want to be, but you're in challengers. You tell me that you retired for three years in AW to focus on your, on your YouTube career. That takes off. You were booming. Then you come back for a year in World War II. That's when I was coaching you. And you decide to re-retire going into the Black Ops 4 season. And now you're just continuously playing in a couple years now on Challengers. I just need to know, like, right now, because I'm a former pro player as well. How do you continue to have this kind of drive? Yeah, like, it's, How is it even wait, possible? But bro? before he goes, can I chime in on that too? Because, brother... Fans and the people of Call of Duty have to realize the type of drive that it takes to do what Doug is doing Unreal. right now. Like, honestly, there is like life within Call of Duty and then there's like the life outside of it. And Doug has experienced both as an adult because when we grew up in COD, you forfeit a lot of things in real life to, to do this, mm -hmm. this thing. And Doug experienced that and then went back to do it because it's the best feeling ever winning a championship. But that drive is next level. So I tip my hat to you, bro, because I don't 100%. know if I would be able to do it. So uh, I know... Yeah, so, Jay, that was a very good question, and I and, just got to say I respect. Because, and it's because, Doug, like, you've been playing for such a long time. Everybody knows your kind of play style. You're the guy that's going to get the bomb down. You're not really worried about the numbers. You're the guy that's going to try to strictly win the game. I couldn't be streaming, so bro. No, when you go through challenges, you know, we even saw it live in an event where a guy was just standing up talking shit in your face. Like, I can imagine with all these players and challenges, you put up numbers like that, you will be able to hear it. And you're a guy that can consistently just, like, bounce it off, bounce it off, and keep on going. So, like, what drives you, bro? I just need to know right now, in Call of Duty, what <laughs> drives you, Doug? Oh, uh, well, when you, uh, when you know that you are in love with something and you just, like, think back after a day and you're like, wow, that day went really, really fast. <laughs> Let me do it all again again tomorrow. And then, like, it's a week, and you're like, wow, you know, that week went really fast. And then you start reflecting it's a month and then a year, and you're like, that went really fast. <laughs> you're like, this yep. is really fun. I really like doing this, and I don't want to stop doing it. And then you go and experience real life. And, you know, fortunately, I've had a great time outside of the game. It's been a lot of fun. I've been living a dream life, and it's great. But then you realize that one little thing that's missing, that thing that makes the time go by really fast every day. So, like, it doesn't even matter if I'm playing in Challengers, getting top 64, which I did, like, 32, 16, 32, pickup team. This guy retires, 32 again. That guy retires, 16. Oh, wow, we're getting some progress. Nope, 32, <laughs> these two retire. Oh, shit, we're free agent again. Even throughout those stressful times when you're just getting, like, clowned all the time, watching people, like, make legacies and everything, I'm still enjoying it. Yeah. I'm still having fun with it, you know? Like, that's the most important thing to me. And also on top of that, too, it's... It's just like when you get that feeling of winning one time, simply put, and you know how to do it, and then you end up doing it a few more times with like completely different people. And then you start like playing with new faces and like starting to go really well with everyone you're playing with. It starts giving that same feeling again, Jay. And, and like when that same feeling again hits you, I don't know if you ever had that in your career, Jay, at any point or even you, Amp, but I vividly remember exactly how I won. And it's like, it's yes, just hitting me every day. Every day of my life, it's just like slamming me in the face. It's I like, mean, dude. You're so close. You gotta, you gotta show it. You have to show it. You have to do it. You ha this is it. Like you have to do it. You put in all this work, and that's what I mean about the time moving so fast. Like, dude, the amount of time I put into the game is unreal. I don't even know when I'm not watching or playing the game. And then when I sit down and I play, and I'm with my team, I'm just like, I'm looking at these other guys, and I'm like, yo, they just didn't put in the time I put into this thing. They just simply just don't think the same way or talk the same language as me. They're not putting in the same time. I see it. I feel it. I feel it when I play them. I see it in their face. I'm like, and then you start thinking, you're like, that's the same feeling I had when I was winning. It's like, damn, okay. Rinse and repeat. Every day is the same. Grind, mm -hmm. repeat. You know, like that feeling, Jay, is just, 
it's like a I don't know that it just it just really does I'm sorry to keep going on this rant but like it definitely does help when when you've had a lot of success and then you've had a lot of shortcoming when you've had a lot of success and shortcoming you could really reflect on all of it and you you just got to be very self-critical of yourself at the end of the day you have to be able to put yourself on a pedestal and hold yourself up on one and explain to yourself why you're going to be there and what you're going to do to be there and you have to you have to do it though i mean at the end of the day it has to speak for itself so, so. doug it sounds like um like you after you won and stuff and like call of duty and competition you're obsessed do you think it's obsession or uh is it something where it's like a challenge and you're just addicted to the process can you differentiate between the two like if you really you say you do a lot of self-reflecting so um if you really had to dig deep what would it what would you say it is it has to be a combination of both because it's just like the feeling of just getting on every day trying to be better at a video game is a great concept because the game itself is there's a little bit of luck to it right like there's a little bit of randomness that comes with call of duty no matter how great the team is or whatever like how good the players are or whatever there's always going to be a little bit of luck to it so there, that strategy plus a little bit of luck always makes it somewhat unexpected so it gives you like a sense of just you always have to prove something in a way and that's like a great feeling to know that you could do that for a living. I, I think that there's nothing better in the world than sports and competition and knowing that like whatever your result is, is directly who and what you are. I think that's a really cool way of measuring success. You know, how much work you put into something versus what you can get out of it in terms of replacing or whatever the case may be, what you're looking for. So for me, it's the placing. Like I want to have a great placing for the amount of work we put in. And um, I think that concept is great. Like I always wanted to be an athlete as a kid. I always want to be in basketball or football or baseball or you know be the best in the world at something and this was like the one thing that always stuck throughout life was this and you know it's undeniable to me that i can do it you know i've already had success in it and i know how it goes very well so it's like what better feeling than to chase something that's like really hard to get that you have a lot of familiarity with and that you could also make money and do for a long period of time i think that's a really great way of spending your time um and it's it's great to it find is. a purpose no, yeah. that you like and and that makes you happy so uh i think it's great and that's that's really what it is it's, it's an obsession it's it's the idea of like wanting to be better at something it's knowing that you're already good at it having fun with it as well like it's it's a combination of a lot of those things that make it so great so doug and then one one last follow-up to that jay sorry if, if i may um so yeah i mean we in this part of the show we want to like kind of get into your brain a little bit about your approach and what drives you and stuff and the last part is you know all the time i see tweets i've been in rooms and i hear people go you know doug's crazy bro like that guy's just crazy yeah. that guy's insane like why do people think like are you aware that people think like you're crazy sometimes because of how driven you are or your tweets or that you say like i'm gonna win champs and people are like that guy's insane are you aware of that or is part of it you play up to the to like the what people think about you kind of like the memes i guess do you play into it a little bit um and are you aware of like how people perceive you at times I don't really care how the way people perceive me. It means nothing to me. I mean, at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is if Boston Breach believes in me, they do. Boston Breach wants results, say less. That's all I care about. I mean, at the end of the day, I've been looking for a lifeline. Like New York Subliners, I thought they were going to do that for me, giving me this opportunity that Boston's giving me now. And like, I think, dude, everyone I'm playing with is going to the league. It's insane. Like, I, I don't it know what insane. the numbers are. I don't know what the numbers are, but I swear over this past year, anyone I've said, okay, yes, 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 yes. I'm looking like three months later. Oh, look at you. Oh, wow. Look at you. Oh, wow. Look at <laughs> what this. is it? Jim? Oh, Let's go through it. So hold on. Oh, it was you, Jimbo, you like, like, Beans. Who else uh, was it? It was Krem, Ghosty, Jimbo, Beans, Grant, Ghosty. Grant. So that's four. It was a lot. There's more too. Uh, did you team with Johnny? You team with Johnny, right? Yeah, I team with Johnny. Johnny as well. Fellow. Uh, Fellow. I, to, I was going to team with Fellow. <laughs> Fellow was going to team with me, but then he went to Florida. <laughs> like that's So, I mean, him. it's like seven, eight people at this point, mm -hmm. right? It's um, crazy, dude. What, Doug, what do you think is the reason why they going and you're not? Like, what's the difference there? Because you're obviously putting in the time. But what, why are your teammates going to pick them before you? Oh, it's definitely a very clear thing to me. I feel that the best way of going back into the league as a 28 year old who has a bad stigma against him, who doesn't have great stats, it's a very simple, easy, efficient way of getting into the league. Have an academy roster that you are able to have the pieces to or make the team that could win. Uh, wow. Check. That's great. Thank you, Boston. Appreciate them. I love everything about what we're doing here. Now I feel empowered to be able to do what's what's the best interest of winning and, and best interest of Boston. So I know exactly how to win with all the right pieces all the time forever that's something i always have in my brain when it comes to this game 
and I love it so much and I spend a lot of time around it. So the way I'm going to get back in is easy. It's, Hey, if this keeps happening, keep people keep I, people have to get into the league around me first. I can't just be the guy that gets in the league. It's it's not going to happen like that. It's the stigma is too strong. It's, Wait, it's very simple. Master yeah. plan. All these guys that go through you to get to the league, and then they just pick you up. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. It's like your reputation <laughs> is what you do. So if I'm getting great placings and everyone I play with goes to the league, I'm going to get my chance. I've already had a chance to go to the Las Vegas Legion, and I turned it down because I just didn't think it would be a good move for the longevity of my career. I sure. thought the best thing to do is continue to stay in challengers. I continuously get great placings. Now I'm streaming everything, so people are going to be able to see what they want to see. I'm confident in showing people what I got. I know what it is. It's good enough to win, and people can just make their own assumptions on it, but I can get paid while doing that have fun while doing it win a lot because i win a lot every day like i know we haven't gotten first place but when i mean when i say win a lot i mean like we win a lot of maps and scrims every day yeah. mm -hmm. we get very far in tournaments all the time so we're always winning a lot of series we're winning so many maps and scrims winning so many series it's a great feeling when you just consistently see victory on the screen and you're like chasing a goal so we can make money in challenger streaming practice we can continuously do well um it's going to motivate me to play better if people are watching me if a league gm is like doug if you do well here, you know, we're scouting you. If you do well here and you play well, like maybe we'll watch you. If I see that in my chat, if they text me or something, I'm dropping a 2.0 every single map. Like, <laughs> I don't care who the other team is, you know, like that's yeah, fun. for that's sure. We play, right? So that, that's the great thing. But you're going to need these players to get in the league around you first so that your reputation is wow, everyone who gets in the league is playing with Doug and it's a great path to get to the league. And then they start watching you because of them, right? Mm -hmm. And then you get in. And then you got to make the most of your opportunity. Like that's how it always goes. So to me, it was a no brainer. I thought this was a great path to, to go to the league and I could have fun while doing it and helping an org that supports me. I think it's a win on many different fronts. It was a good plan. And the, cr and the craziest thing, Doug, is that you said that you had an offer from Las Vegas Legion. Whenever I see a guy like you, a guy who's been trying to fight right back into it, I would think that you would jump ship immediately and just take that opportunity just to get into the league. But what made you to sit back and relax and enjoy the soul for now and wait for that proper opportunity well i think there's a lot of different reasons why but i think the biggest reason is that um more than any financial reason or time commitment reason um it's just as simple as if you go to the league and you don't perform I just i'm a big i'm a big stats guy when it comes to overall greater good i'm not a big like number kill death ratio guy but i could see the best potential outcome and there's not many players that have went into the league that had poor performances on teams that ended up having good careers after. The only one that really stands out in my head right now is Octane. Right? Yeah, like, I want to be able to be seen like, yeah, I want to be here like long. I don't want to just be here and then back to challengers and then back to this and then back to there. I want to be like an Octane in the league, you know? I want to be on a team and have like consistent great results and players and organizations and fans that can rely on me and you know like they're building something great over there i think that's what we all are striving for and i think if you strive for anything less than that you're not going to get anything close to that so you mm -hmm. got to make sure when you get your chance yes you want your chance it's so hard to get one but mm -hmm. it's equally as hard to get a second chance if the first one fails and many players who join the league join bad teams and it fails and they never get back in that happens a lot it's too common and that that's probably even worse than getting a chance at all um and it's crazy to hear you wait hold on man, hold on good. it's crazy to hear you compare yourself to octane as well because you're a guy who recently just made a road change in call of duty you were known as being one of the most objective minded one of the best objective minded players in the smg role and you were doing that for 11 plus years you recently just made the change to the AR. And that is weird, that dude. I'm not going to lie. Octane, like, how is it now running that AR in your hand, holding the pre-aim, Dougie? I'm not going to lie to you, man. Like, I feel like it feels nice. It feels really, really nice now to answer your question. It feels great. I feel very, very good right now. But I'm not going to lie, man. Like, I did so, like, again, I, did, I put a lot of thought into it. And I'm thinking, I'm like, well, I won four majors four championships, two of them were with an AR, two of them were with a sub, but the two I won with a sub were because there was four subs in the game, not because I had a role to use a sub. Mm -hmm. The two others that I ran with an AR were not because I was forced to use an AR, it's because I had to, because it was, it was all the gun that was in the game. All from us, so maybe, yeah. maybe all this time, you know, because my results in challengers last year were pretty good with the sub. My results are better this year with an AR. I mean, since I moved to an AR, my placings are second, third, and then I got top six in the elite. But 
to cut me some slack, we lost Kyle right before playoffs. And we were looking like the best team in the game when Kyle was getting called up to Boston. So like we lost Kyle, then we had Johnny running an AR. So we had three ARs in the playoffs and we got top six, but like we got third and we got second and third. And I only had like a month on the AR at the time. And now I've had like a good two and a half, three months on it. And I feel fluid. And it's like, oh, I feel like I have that you know, as a player, when you feel like you just have that takeover ability, it's like at any time, any second, I'm just waiting, you know, like if any little thing, any of these little things go my way, it's, it's over. If any of them, if any of these little things happen, they're fucked. You know, like when you have yeah. that feeling, it's like, you feel really good about it. So yeah. maybe this whole time for like my whole career, like, I don't know. Cause why did I win every year when I was playing? It was because everyone had to run a sub and I was able to win that year. And then like everyone had to run an AR and I won that year. But then when it went to roles, I didn't win since then. So I was thinking about it. I'm like, maybe my role was wrong the whole time. Maybe I should have ran an AR. But Doug, you would have been the oldest SMG in the league. So it was probably a good yeah. move to switch over to the AR, right? If you think about it, because that that's a tough stigma to break, brother. Like trying to get picked up and being <laughs> like, you got the old stigma, you got the, <laughs> the, the, the wash stigma, but then you got the SMG one. Like, yeah, come on, right. man. That would have just been tough. So personally, I think it was a good move. Uh, so for you, Jay's question, that kind of leads into mine because I was going to ask like, I feel like Call of Duty is ramped up to a point now where it's like, it's very professional, especially on a CDL level. The teamwork is better. Uh, these guys are going super hard in practice, watching VOD. I mean, getting some players back in the day to watch VOD during our era was like impossible, I feel like at times, right? <laughs> yep. So so yeah. now, now like even it's obviously trickled down to challengers, like y'all are going hard, um, at least the top level teams. So for you, you're having to learn how to use an AR, but on top of that, there's in the last couple of years been things you've had to like, learn and adapt to right in terms of the process how is that different uh i guess in this era versus the way that you came up what did you have to teach yourself and and sort of adapt to um it's almost like you have to relearn everything in a different way in a different tone speaking to people in different ways yeah that's a big the one. most important thing you know talking to crim a lot helps me in ways because i ask him a lot of very specific questions about why and how there's disconnects between players specifically like paco uh why and how those build what comes to fruition and how do they happen like i always think about stuff like that because i want longevity and i've been able to win with a lot of different players in the early part of my career now I'm entering the prime of my life and I want to choose it chasing Call of Duty championships and I'm very determined to win more Call of Duty championships in the second part of my career and doing mm -hmm. it all over again. I'll take a lot of pride in relearning new culture, relearning new people, finding new ways to adapt to stay at the top. I think that's very fascinating and exciting. So it's just different generations and you kind of just have to like take yourself and take yourself out of everything and you got to like listen. You got to like be able to like I don't know. I talk a lot. I talk a lot more than most people do, but you also got to be able to like have a great way of just listening to everything around you, the body language of the people around you, the way people speak, the way people act, see the way you make them react with the way that you do your mannerisms, how you speak and talk to people. It matters a lot. So just being mindful of all that and, and gaining people's respect through just being genuine and being honest and hardworking is really key. So yeah, I don't know. I just think it's it's definitely a learning curve, though. It, it's not as easy as people would think, especially when you get older, because you start thinking about things in a different way. And like younger people, like my one teammate is 18 years old. Kyle was 19 when I picked him up. Dan was 20 and he was in my house for six months. Kyle was in my house for like two months when he was 19 this year. Like these people are thinking differently about life than we were when we were their age. Dude, and I you know always think back how yeah. we were thinking at their age and how they're thinking now. We, we think different. I thought about that recently, man, because like it's weird, right? Like, uh, I was trying to think like when I was 18 and 19, the way I thought about things. And then when people would say what you just said, I'd be like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, you don't think yeah. that much differently than me. No, yeah. we really do, man. Cause like now I truly like, you don't care as much what people say about you or how they perceive you, right? Like you've been through a lot at this point, you know yourself uh, on top of that, in terms of handling things, like for me, I'll be like, I don't have as much patience. I'll be like, how do you not understand this? You know what I mean? Um, so I guess that would be, I don't think me and Jay would survive in this era, bro. We'd be raging at our teammates. <laughs> it would be like, uh, it would just be so hard. Um, so oh, that's for the hardest awesome, thing. That was the hardest, by the way, could I just say that was the hardest thing? Because our whole generation was ragers. Oh, we are ragers. Yeah. Yeah, I am yeah, a yeah, yeah. great rage. I love raging. It's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, what that's the you could blur this out if you need to, but I'm just going to be honest. No, go ahead. Like, nah, no what you can curse, Are you fucking stupid? Are you crazy? Dude, what the fuck is wrong? Bro, how many fucking times do I have to say not to chat? Like, that's how we are. <laughs> uh -huh. 
dude that is the hardest challenge by far yeah when you're playing with new players having to turn that side of you off is like the hardest challenge and it's like one of the things i just look at is in my head it's like bro i've been able to do anything i set my mind to you this oh. is the hardest challenge i'm setting my mind to changing that like that is hard to change but i'm changing that and that's what's going to give a lot of longevity and do you all we remember all like game, bro like like in yeah. jay and doug do y'all remember like Obviously, we all started very young, but there was like at least like a year or two where you just had immense growth as a Call of Duty player and you just got like way, 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 way better. Um, do you remember how much your mental and like focus and the way you approached it changed during that time? For me, it was like right when I team with Rambo, like that whole year, just yeah, teaming exactly. with an older dude completely helped me get better, even though Rambo wasn't a as good during, during that time in his career. And it's weird because Doug, you are that guy now for these, these people. They may not even mm -hmm. realize but when you're 18, 19, you team with somebody that much older that's been through a lot, they're learning stuff and they might not even realize it, which is, which is weird. It's just weird to look at it from that angle. It definitely is, but I, I take it with a lot of um, appreciation and gratitude because I kind of got eased into this role in a way too with Dan Ghosty because Dan is, when I picked him up, he was 20, I was 27. And the thing about Dan is that yes, he was, he was young, but not old, right? Like I feel like 20 is a young prospect, right? Like. They're not mm -hmm. old, but they're not like some 18 and cracked player. But the thing about Dan is yeah. that he's been playing competitive Call of Duty prior to AW. I mean, he's been playing competitive Call of Duty for fuck, eight years now, nine years, 10 years almost. So like he's been around <laughs> for a long time. No one's known about him, though. He's just been like under the radar for a lot College of people. College stuff, yeah. A lot of different, he was just under the radar. He was just sitting here, sitting in challengers. No one knew who he was. And it's like I'd watch his POV. I'm like you're teaming with me absolutely <laughs> i'm playing with this guy yeah i'm playing with him and i'm talking to him and his mind for the game he is just like me we think about the game in a very similar way and that's what made us very close the way we thought about the game so that's why he ended up living here with me and we spent so much time here every day playing and talking about cod so uh he's like an older like soul even though he's a younger person and then we get kyle right he's a very young Type, cramp. like high happy he's a very happy-go-lucky energy he's very you don't really see much in the the matches but kyle's the most like hey, here's so guys yo kyle yo oh he's one guy like real sorry wow dude oh yeah like dude kyle is like the most like if you could think of a stereotypical young call of duty 18 year old crack player it's kyle so like he kind of gives you that mentality now and like he's joining our culture where we have an older culture but he's a younger player yeah. so all these younger players are coming into an older more veteran culture like right now it's me sean and nate Nate's been in challengers for five years. He won an MVP in challengers, still hasn't gotten a league opportunity. Crazy to me. He's one of the best players in the game right now. Shawnee, obviously a veteran, had a chance in the league, was the best thing that ever happened to London Royal Ravens, right? Older player. Me, older player. Now we got an 18-year-old player. Doesn't know anything. He just started competing six months ago. Literally, he just started playing six months ago outside of S&D. So mm -hmm. it's like, and he speaks Spanish. He's bilingual. So th these younger players, yes, they're learning a lot because they're in an older culture, but honestly, we embrace these younger players and we listen to a lot of the ways they talk, they speak, they approach the game, they look at things, they think about things. It helps the older players stay on their feet too, so that you never feel like you're not in culture. You're not yeah. following a rhythm of how people are thinking because this game, I'm sorry to go on these rants, but this game is all about like understanding how all these people are thinking. Like I need to know yeah. why simp a BZ and sell do everything they do on a day-to-day -day basis. I need to know why Sam Octane and Envoy eat this for breakfast and Kenny does this and scrims it. <laughs> like, why are they doing these things? Like, I need to know exactly why they all move the way they move so that when I play them, I know all their tendencies. If I know all their tendencies, I already have a jump on them. Like, and then you just got to go out and play your game. So I think that's really important in competition. It's also really important in team culture to understand the way your teammates think and why they think the way they think. You know, like that's so important. So it, it has more to do than just like their growth. It's also about like how we're going to win as well. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of psychology that goes into it. Wow. That was a great answer to that, honestly. Yeah, great answer. Sorry great for the answer. long answer, by the way. No, we welcome the long answers, yeah, yeah. Doug. No, go yeah. ahead, dude. You're all good. All right, Dougie. So you're talking about these young players. And keep in mind, we know that Ghosty came from the CCL. You were, what did it all start with a text chat and eventually he decided to move in? Yeah, how'd that happen? And also, did Kremp live with you as well? Yeah, like you imagine being the no parents funny. of these young players and just sitting yeah. like, wait, you're gonna go play Call of Duty in somebody's house. The guy's 27, he lived by his damn self, and you just gonna live with him to go play Call of Duty. Just show him like, the video oh, of him on the jet ski, like Don, he's pretty cool, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, how was that, bro? How was oh that getting all these young guys to come live with you and dedicate themselves to being a Call of Duty player? Yo, the script writers are on point. I couldn't make a better story up if I tried to, okay? This is the reality of what happened, okay? So I'm, I pick up Dan Ghosty and Shawnee, and we get Juan. 
and uh shawnee has his visa issues he can't mm -hmm. compete he has to go back home so which tough, screwed, man. right it was the worst i don't know how we did it i don't know how we got good placings and like made it work and got shawnee a visa at the same time shawnee should have had to retire the the way we made him not have to retire it's like yo anyways dan ghosty shawnee goes back home right juan retires all right so then it's just me and ghosty looking for two um we play in the elite with fellow and Johnny. Johnny forfeits us because he doesn't show up. We pick up Clayster right. as a fill in for Johnny. We lose because we already lost an auto forfeited series. So it's me, mm. fellow Clay, Ghosty. We lose the elite. After that happens, Clay steals my team from me straight up. Dan leaves me. He's not <laughs> living in my house yet. Dan leaves me. Clay the team's so with fellow Johnny and Clay. Sean's Wait, in he's Scotland. He's not living in your house yet. He has not living, living in my house. Yet. This is before we moved into my house. Oh, this is before. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Listen to all this, man. So my Clay steals my team. By the way, I ran a sub and he ran an AR. I don't know why I was replaced by an AR at the time, but I was. So it's Ghosty, Clay, Fellow, and Johnny. All of a sudden, Spart gets benched. Then they bench, they drop Ghosty for Spart, which is a big mistake because I thought Ghosty was like that guy. Even though Spart won an MVP, fair enough. He won MVP in the league at the time, like fair enough. But Ghosty to me was that guy. And like, dude, Ghosty was telling me like because he was still friends with me when he like left me he was like dude i gotta leave because it's all them against me i have to join them or it's just me and you looking for two oh. i'm like all right man like do you bro like I get do it. what you gotta do that's still that's my boy like of course i'm gonna do you he's like yo i'm not gonna lie man and it's funny for me to say this about dan now i don't think anyone's ever i don't think dan's ever said this this is gonna be funny um obviously like at the time you know he's a kid in college and he doesn't have any money he's not working a, like he doesn't have a job or anything so he's like yo doug um even though he's like playing with spot he's playing with like fellow clay and johnny mm -hmm. and challengers he's like yo i'm i'm start to I'm, I'm about to apply for a job uh and get a part-time job man and wow I'm like, nice dude i'm like nice man he's like yeah i'm gonna apply at home depot i was like all right sick and then like a few days goes by, Spark gets benched, and I texted Dan. I literally texted him straight up. I'm like, Dan, I just have a feeling that they're gonna drop you for Spart. He goes, Doug, I think you're right. I'm gonna let you know <laughs> if that happens. I'm like, all right, bet. He texts me like three hours later, yo, Doug, I got dropped for Spart. I was like, all right, bet. So are we living together? He goes, Yeah. The only other thing is that I applied at Home Depot. I didn't know if I was gonna get the job or not. Um, I was like, dude, don't take the job. Screw that. Just join me. And like, we'll just make a lot of money together. Like, screw all that. That's so dope, he's dude. like, he's like, he's like, wait, but like, let me find out if I'm going to get the job. Oh, I actually just got an email about the job. They don't want me. They're not going to take me because I think I'm too small. <laughs> they literally stupid. did not accept him because they thought he was too scrawny. And he, he, is, he, like, is kinda, he is a thick figure. I mean, yeah, I'll be yeah, honest. Great Call so of Duty build, dropped. but not a Home so, Depot build. So he's teaming with me. We pick up Clay last minute, and then Clay gets me dropped. And then after, Ghosty gets dropped. And then Ghosty gets denied from Home Depot. Ghosty lives in and moves in with me. And then we're good. And then Yo, we're shout out Home Depot, Depot, honestly. We might not yeah, have Ghosty or even you where you're at right now if it wasn't for Home Depot. So wow. shout, out, shout out to, first of all, Dan Ghosty's diet and also Home mm. Depot's uh, requirements. Yep. If he was broke then, like you, Doug, he would have been screwed, no, brother. No, the craziest part about it, as all this is going down, Sean thinks he has to retire, and he's not playing any. He's just he's in limbo. In <laughs> he's just in Scotland thinking he's having to retire because his uh, visa didn't go through yet. I'm the one responsible. I'm the one who has to get the visa done for Sean, get Ghosty back on board, get him moving to my house, talk to his foster mom on the phone for about an hour and a half, explaining everything that's going to happen, why it's going to happen, get the new fourth. Uh, the org wanted Johnny. I said, no, we're not getting Johnny. I don't think we want him. I don't think we're going to win with him. I I know five other players we can win with. They're like, then who? I said, we're going to get Kremp. That's the one we're going to get. And then we get him, get him on board. Sean G's my backup controller at the event. Hasn't played Con in five weeks. Get his I visa. Go into the event and we get fourth. I don't know how we got fourth. I was like mind blown. Hey, that's like, wow, a win in my book, bro. That is K. How did that, that happen? Like, like, that's, why, that's why I'm like, dude, Boston Academy last year, like if that whole online LCQ didn't happen, the team that won Challenger Champs, I never lost a map to that team. Like I have screenshots of making players on that team go two and 24. Like we three all them all the time. It was like, I'm like, bro, they won Challenger Champs. Like no disrespect, but it's like, if that LCQ didn't happen because the league format sucked and Daniel Saban admitted to it, he's like, dude, that's on us. We're going to get better. We can't like have the certain amount of teams here. I was like, dude, like if I could be at this championship, I'm probably going to win this challenger championship. And like, then my next year is going to look really good. And I'm like, Ugh. That's now, a I gotta tough stay patient feeling. again. Yeah. And then this year it's the same thing again. And I'm beating all these guys on land that are going to the league again. All the guys going to the again. league. I beat them on land. I beat them all. It's like, it's happened again. So I'm like, deep breath. 
Keep so, Doug, it. I we will good. say we good. there has been the small narratives going around of like Doug getting on Boston, like as Boston keeps struggling <laughs> to not make it happen. There's been like little people throwing him out. I don't know if you've heard it left and right. Uh, I know Pat said it. Uh, a couple other people were bringing it up on Twitter. Um, for you, uh, let's switch over talking about a little bit of the CDL side of things. And we'll start with Boston. Um, what do you think about the current state of that roster? Uh, because in their last showing, obviously, they put Nero on the bench. They've been having some troubles. But Vivek came in, and they won their first series. Uh, what are your thoughts on the main Boston roster at the moment? And if you feel like you could improve them? It's a great question, and I have a great answer. I think that between Denz and I, we have a we have a similar but different approach to the game. I see the silver lining with the game, and Denz loves to get players that are very... Um, make sure they guarantee a kill before they die. And that's the way I like to describe it because Kyle's that type of a player. Ben, to an extent, is also that type of a player too. I obviously play with half of that roster. I know everything about those players. Um, I think that what Dens wants to do is just get as much talent as possible into Boston, get the best players available, which I think we've done a great job of getting great players between, between the both academy teams, and the yeah. main. We got Awakening in the offseason. I mean, Awakening's been one of the top players in the league for years. He just hasn't been yeah. able to figure out a roster to put it together, it seems. And Boston seems to have that same issue that Awakening has had throughout his career with some of these teams. So to me, it's a very simple answer. See how this goes with Vivid because they clearly need more selfless play, mm -hmm. right? Like that's why Nero's on the bench for Vivid. I actually played against Vivid and Challengers that whole week, and I played against that same team with Nero, and I could see the difference in the games, the team's uh, dynamic between Vivid and Nero. So it makes sense that they're trying Kyle. Now they're trying to change the sub duo to see if it works better with Vivid, see if it works better with Nero. With Nero, it wasn't working as well. Now they're going to try it with Vivid. So far, it seems to be working well. So I think it's one of those things where you evaluate it as it goes, and if it's not broken, don't fix it. I think they have a great thing going, and I think between everyone top to bottom throughout our academy system our main roster our talent is stacked i mean there's no weak link anywhere you look between any of the four players in the academy nero who's also on the bench playing with gunless's team or any of the main players on the main roster like we have a great formula they just got to figure out how to put it together um yeah, I sometimes wanna... it's not about the talent you know sometimes it's not about the talent it just comes down to the in individual play in the game or your team effort in the game because we all know nero is a very talented player mm -hmm. it's tough when you don't have talent player. on a team jay that's when it's yeah. tough yeah yeah but then when you had all that talent you saw that they had were struggling in harpo what was it like one and eight and then they make the roster change to bring vivid back and vivid probably is not as snappy as nero is but just the way that his brain works is good for the team so it's not always about talent. Sometimes it's about bringing that other stuff to the table. You know, what? I don't getting people to connect. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, I don't necessarily agree with the people that say that Vivid isn't as like snappy and cracked as the other SMGs. Because I've heard a lot of people say that, and I think he does have a beamer, bro, and he is cracked. I think the difference is, at least what I've noticed in that last match was, he's willing to just hop in the hill. He'll fly out yeah. first literally every single time. And and when I say fly out first, it's not he's just headlessly sprinting and playing super fast. He waits on his teammates and then he goes first for them, right? Like he's just like a, a the right type of SMG on a team that has good slayers. It's exactly what you need yeah. to make the game easier for you. Um, and that's why the stat line doesn't always lead to him going like double positive or, or having, you know, 40 and 30 he games. He could. He's yeah, I totally think he could. Yeah, it's I just basically like Hixie for Toronto, you know. So it's like you yeah, but exactly. like yes, Vivid, Vivid has more of a strap. Vivid's got more of a strap than Hixie does, bro. Yeah, <laughs> Vivid is like he he's had the uh, he's the most accurate player for three years straight. I just think that guy's been disrespected for a while. Well, that that has to be that has to be a little bit tilted though, right? The for sure, he maybe stat. doesn't he maybe like, doesn't people, pre fire people as much. Wall bang, people probably spray intentionally, right? Like I think that doesn't get taken into into consideration. Maybe maybe it's not a like I always thought, and I'm not trying to like say anything bad about Reese at all. Like this has nothing to do. I always think like yes, there's good thing about the accuracy stat, but also like does that also mean that you like like you never sh like maybe you just stop shooting at times or maybe I don't, I don't know. I feel like it's better to just like shoot more than so, shoot less. So we've all, I've heard a ton of people, yeah, yeah, I'm I agree. Not trying to roast him. I'm no, 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 like I've heard a ton of people talk about it and there's been no like defined answer, but it's a ridiculous stat just to have, especially with the it's amount of cool engagement that he's getting. Yeah. To me, I don't think it's as efficient as the stat says. It, yeah, it, it isn't. Think, At least in my opinion, I agree with you, Doug, because if you, if you think about what an SMG does, like hitting routes, you're barely getting into a gunfight here and there, going up against an AR who has to hold down a power position, put down a couple of shots to get your teammates weaker, like their accuracy is going to be a lot lower than an SMG that's a route runner. You know what I'm saying? So whoa, like, you got to take that stab with a little bit of a grain of salt. Well, I would say it's it's hard to really figure out how much that stat means because like 
he also has a lot of damage he's always very high in damage right oh, so yeah. mm-hmm. and he has a shit ton of I engagements so so if he has a lot of damage and a shit ton of engagements and he's also that accurate it's hard to sort of like draw those parallels and that is a bizarre stat i wish we had more weird uh stats like that to, to attach to players but anyways um do you feel like you could fix a lot of their problems if you were on that team um, I think that their problems are already fixed with Reese. It seems sure. they 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 ha- they seem to have a formula that works for them. Like I think their AR duo consistently puts up numbers and gets kills and damage. I think that Kyle. Well, I know that Kyle puts up kills and damage. He's very consistent at doing that, and I think Reese is very good at being selfless. And I think a formula is very simple. You always need at least one selfless guy. You need two like Slayer selfish type players and then you need like a, a hybrid something he, somebody that's kind of in between maybe like um maybe a player that's selfless maybe a player that's selfish you know see see how it flows but you definitely need at Knows least when two to make selfish those players and one selfless player yes so it, it's it's for time to tell i think that their formula is going to be working though i mean minnesota is not the easiest team to beat on land albeit the loudest eq drama right like oh, minnesota still we'll get into that oh, yeah, though. they beat they beat them on land in person um mm-hmm. that's going to be one of the harder matches so it's a great way to start the stage off and get them closer to guaranteeing champs but like uh you, you know you talk about that roster i feel like beans is comms bro there's been a couple of times in very important moments where he just goes ballistic uh, when you team with him, was that something he did? He just bring a lot of energy, or have we just called him at bad times during listenings? Oh no, Ben's definitely like that. I mean, we were bouncing off of each other between me, Kyle, and Ben. Jesus, man, it sounded like a nuclear bomb was going off in the comms, <laughs> dude. It was insane. If you ever listen to any of the comms with me, Ben, and Kyle, it is just too much. And I think as this year went on, I become very conscious of that. I'm like, dude. And my comms, like, they change all the time, but I think that's, like, the one thing since I came back to COD three years ago was the comms, making my comms perfect again. I think that was a big thing about winning, right? Like, when you guys win, you know the feeling. Like, your comms are very simple, clear. You know when they're going to be coming. Like, you know when you're going to say what you're going to say because you know what you're going to play and you know what you're going to do. That's when your comms are, like, at the ultimate high. Two top tier, pushing tree, dead, dark, I have P1 cubby, weak could be stable like you know what i mean like when you have those clear so, quick yeah. you know you're on point right so i think for me fixing my comms is a big thing and hearing that listening with ben i mean it's definitely not a surprise i was definitely used to a lot of that um we we were huge culprits of that on their academy team together um and it probably made the game harder for us to play well because we had very definitely. inconsistent results when we teamed you know what like i mean i had a role on some of our teams like me and merc we were just like dude I want to almost be like robots, bro. Like, I just want you to call out what you're doing, what the plan is, where you died, and where that person is. Like, that's it. And mm-hmm. just, like, almost have, like, no emotion. And not even after maps, like, until the series is over. So, for me, when I... It bothers me. I know some people are like it, but it bothers me whenever I hear people screaming in the middle of a game. Like, I don't give a... I don't give a shit if you got a two-piece, bro. Like, just two dead. What we doing next, bro? Like, th- that's all that I want to hear. Um... I'm curious, like your thoughts, like you sort of just touched on it, uh, how you feel about like players getting super amped up in the comms in game, bringing energy like that. Does it actually help teams in game? Because I don't, it never helped me or any of the teams that I was on. I never liked it. Oh, it has to be very brief. You know, like if it's in S and D and it's to win a round. I mean, we had a lot of these moments, for example, in search with our team. Kyle loves getting loud. Uh, he's a great vocal IGL, especially in SND. We gave him the keys to SND when it came to being the IGL because he just loves, he has a motor mouth, man. He's so energetic and it's contagious. And we'd have so many rounds on land. You know, we just, we only lost two SND maps in Texas, the entire land, the entire week. And we only lost two. So think about it. A lot of the rounds were winning and we're winning frequently. So we're clutching rounds, we're winning rounds easy. So you're hearing Kyle going, God, oh my God, let's fucking go, let's go, let's go. So you're getting hyped because it's it's contagious. We're just mm-hmm. continuously winning. So I was always mm-hmm. the guy that say, yo, yo, chill, 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 chill. What are we doing this round? What are we doing this round? Yo, Kyle, chill, chill, chill. What are we doing this round? What are we doing this round? I'd literally give him like three seconds to like do his little thing. And I'd, I'd, I'd actually take a lot of pleasure in that. I'm like, yo, this guy's in the freaking zone. That's fair. Sure. Like, I'm on point, bro. I'm on point. Like I'm not, everything I'm doing is on point. This is the highest level you're ever going to see in anything. Like, this is on point S&D COD. You're never going to see better than this. Like, that's what, like, the feeling was in the moment when I'd be hearing that. So I love mm-hmm. when players do that. I love when it's controlled. Um, in that listening, I definitely think it wasn't a good time <laughs> to, to get hyped up like that. But mm-hmm. um, because it ended up, like, resulting in the team losing points, you know, and it wasn't really, like, anything crazy. But 
Um, I think that's something that Ben's going to look at and he's going to be like, dude, okay, I have this passion. I have so much love for what I do and I have so much like enthusiasm towards it. I'm going to control this. I'm going to make this like perfect because that's how I felt about it too. Because I, I think me, Ben and Kyle are very similar in that way. We all have that same issue where we love to get hype and scream and whether it's like raging or screaming or whatever it is, like we just have so much energy and I think it's all about how we control it. So I think Ben, as he continues to play, is going to learn how to control that and I think use that for his benefit as well. But yeah, I definitely, I definitely think that moment was just like completely pointless to be using it. To put a button and on I, that, I just want to say that yeah. I think comms are the most important thing in Call of Duty competition. Uh, and I think it's the biggest thing uh, in my experience when I won championships that differentiated my team from other teams was simply comms. And I think in the you know future games and previous games, that's what differentiated the top team from the rest of the teams around them was how they navigated through tough scenarios. And how do you navigate through those scenarios? It's through comms. So I wanted to get your take on it. I, I like that take, you know, control, Wait. control the chaos if there is some. That's nuts. That's actually crazy that you say that, eh? because I know Doug. I've teamed with Doug. We've been able to get hyped next to each other. But I've done the same thing with you. The only difference is, is that it has to come in the right moment, bro. I was a guy that was always going you up always there talking yeah. shit, especially if I'm getting a two piece or something like that. Like, I'm going to let the other team know. I'm going to let my teammates know, like, oh, you yeah, were good I'm at it. Play. You were good exactly, at it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But it's all about finding the perfect timing. And. Whenever you're one of those guys that's going to bring all that energy, you just can't lose focus of the communication. Like, you can go out there and get two. Oh, yeah, I got two. But you got to instantly follow up. All right, I'm taking this spot. Like, you can't just go out there and just, like, release all your energy like that because that's when it's gone. You have to be able to store it for those proper I agree, yeah. And I think, hey, you got a good taste of it from me, and so did you, Doug. So I think people who get hype, it's great for team. I think. But Jay, that's what fantastic. that's what held our teams back a little bit was that me and you had we had different takes on that. Like it worked for oh, us yeah, in that yeah, Cinderella yeah. run that we had, but I uh -huh. never agreed with that. And then in on the LG team, that's when we were we had differing takes on that. That was but, a part of that Cinderella run. Remember that? Yeah. So were a great, Jay, duo. <laughs> great duo. Great duo in your time. Great team. We of two. were a good duo. Fantastic so, team of two. So Doug. Um. So recently, Doug, uh, there was a map where. Our record, me and Jay's record, almost got broken. All right, almost. Uh, a bunch of team, a bunch of players. What, what, what game was that, uh, Jay? It was Vegas versus Thieves. I'm pretty sure. Oh, Colorado S and D, right? No, it was Vegas no, versus was New York. Acilo. Vegas versus New York. It was yeah, Vegas. Acilo S and D. Uh, yeah, they all had a donut going into the last. I think it was the second to last or last round. Uh -huh. They ended up getting like uh, four kills. Same thing, Doug. That was <laughs> versus you, uh, where everybody had a donut. Um, you were one of the people that got a kill. It was you and App. Do you remember uh, that tournament, what that was like? Uh, not that this specific map. Um, it just leads me into that champs because you guys were the favorite. It was you guys and complexity. You guys were the and favorites to win that too. tournament. Yeah, and you beat us early on. You guys are making that run. Uh, talk to us a little bit about Ghost in that, champion, in that championship run you had at regionals leading into the event because y'all had to be full of the utmost confidence. Uh-huh. I think... Uh... I just look back and I remember it's like the same way I'm building Boston Academy is the same way. Like that's how I have these like juices flowing. I feel like it's strictly business all over again, Jay. Like oh, yeah. I have the same exact mentality as the SB days and ghosts. Like they, I, I took over that team. They're like, okay, build the roster. And I just, I just take my time and I look at all my pieces around me and I'm like, which moves make all the most sense? Apathy. Yes. Saints. Yes. Dito. Yes. Boom. I put it together, play, get to that scrim damn son that's gonna work yeah that's how i feel with shawnee pentagram snoopy i get in that scrim damn son yeah that's gonna work like so i'm like sitting there like with my lips chat and then i go into the regional event with that team not knowing how good it was gonna be and then like you win the regional without dropping a series like very controlled that was the easiest championship i won by far like, no you guys regional. fried everybody and you guys set the meta doug i yeah, remember yeah. I never mm. followed that meta, but you set the meta for, for everybody. You were, you guys figured out steady aim. I was like, what the fuck? Like, why is everybody <laughs> using this? And lo and behold, you guys are just hip firing, smoking everybody. So Dude, we were so fast. We were the fastest yeah. team in the game. It was yeah. insane. Like the speed and the pacing of the team was so fast and we almost 6-0 Cole in the final. So like I'm going into the world championship, like, dude, the only comp is complexity. They won two maps against me in the final when I had a 5-0 lead. Like, I got this for sure. Then my org owner thinks it's a good idea for the org. And again, I'm trying to build this org, right? Like, that's mm -hmm. like the thing. Like, I'm a, I'm a 19 year old at the time, but it's the same mentality as a 28 year old. And that's why I love what I do so much, guys, because 
Everything I add at 19 is the same thing I have at 28. Hey, Sample build this team for me. Experience. Great. Okay. Strictly business. Best team in the game. Boom. Then I join phase. Great. Join phase. Best team in the game. Boom. Then I become a content creator. Boom. Like, so with the um, SB team, we go to the Optic HQ for a week and we play Optic in a LAN, like literally in the living room. I'm not kidding. In the Optic house in Chicago, in the living room for a week straight, 12 hours a day, every day for a week. And we're scrimming Optic. And I'm like, dude. Like, they were not that good. And I'm like, Ugh, I'm just getting annoyed now. Like, why am I doing this? I'm sitting yeah. here every day for 12 hours a day. Just I'm playing Optic in a best of 11 three times a day, every day, all day. And they it's were not like, good at regionals. So you guys really did make them terrible. Better. They were terrible. Did, they couldn't beat us in the try. They, they almost lost well. to Burns yes, in there. Yes, because then I go and I play them at champs, and they beat me game five S&D because <laughs> they play me on every map and mode a bajillion times. <laughs> that like, was you knew everything such I did. a bad That's call. The, like, Oh, people are sitting there like, oh, one of my favorite Nate Shot and Scump moments is when Nate Shot was getting hype and then, you know, Clayster got hype because it was Clayster and Embos and Scump and Nate, they all got hype and they beat SB and I'm like, <laughs> dude, they literally paid, like, this is what they did, bro. This is what they did straight up. They sucked at the game. They said, who's the best team in the game? Well, Complexity doesn't like us. They're not going to do this. They're not stupid enough to. Pat's not dumb enough to come teach us how to play. Oh, Strictly Business just beat them. Oh, let's hit up those guys. Hey, you guys want to come and teach us how to play COD? We're going to be on stream to 25,000 people. We're going to pay for your hotel, 80 bucks a night. And uh, we're going to get like 20,000 people in the stream. So we're going to make a crap ton of money off this. Pay for your guys living here and teach us how to play the game. You down? Oh, yeah, man. yeah, let's do it, man. Oh, let's oh, go. That's, that's so Doug. great. Oh, Optic Doug. Gaming. Doug, yeah, oh, man. Doug. Scumpy, let me make you feel like you're so good at the game because you're already mechanically good and you could shoot straight. Let me teach you everything now, too, and show you how to play against the best by scrimming us every single day. Yes, for free. Oh, man. For free. Who made the call on that, Doug? It was the, the org owner, right? Was that you? It was the org. No, I said no. I said no. And then my org owner said we should do it. And I'm like, fine, I trust you. I so Doug, you, I said. I've I never said, told you this, you. but we were at the, our our house, and you guys are the reason we did a um a land, and we were like, uh -huh. they're going we to do a, a we're like they're going to do a land with optic. We're like that is not a good idea. So we <laughs> we we invited the European team TCM to come. To our mm -hmm. house. So and <laughs> yeah. I, I don't I'm not clowning them. I'm just saying that like obviously this is a team that we felt like we were confident in beating regardless of how long we played them and, and helped them uh get better uh but they were smoking us in this land anyways they like they were clapping us uh, in the in the land house but i just remember sitting there i was like sb's bringing optic oh they are faded for doing that yeah <laughs> it's like Damn. i don't know how you're the best team in the game and you fly out to help a team that can't no, really put it together that. Like, yeah, no, it yeah. Sense. Like, Yo, you went out of your element in atlanta facing cold war flies in toronto ultra's house that scrims them every day Right? That Wait, is you're crazy. Get paid for it, that what? is that puts no, it in perspective. They paid for the hotel. They didn't pay us money. Ah, we got zero dollars for it. I that knew bringing tough. up this topic would be a good one, man. Hector, you owe me drinks minimum. Hector Rodriguez, <laughs> you owe me minimum drinks, man. You know what we did for you. Oh my You know goodness. damn well what we did for you. Just give uh, me a vodka cranberry and we're good. Hell Jesus, yeah. man. Hundred thousand um, dollars I lost, man. I lost a hundred grand. No, I, I'm. I mean, going into that, we were we were sitting there thinking like, yeah, it's SB or Cole probably gonna win this tournament. To be honest, uh -huh. mm -hmm. you guys still got top four. I mean, still solid. You know, yeah, Luckily, but Optic beating us was directly because they played us every day. You beating us was like the craziest run ever. I was like, all right, like I'll give it to them. Like they just had a crazy run. It is what it is. Yeah, I mean, we have played uh, like that, nine back-to-back back back games. Been, we should have been winners finals playing Cole, three owing them, going to grand finals, six owing them. Like that was the script we had, and then we go to do the optic land. Y'all like, didn't get to play Cole, yeah, right? It's tough. We never played him. That's the thing. It's like we never played him. Damn, if they would have played Cole, like we might have been able to win chance. If they would have beat them, yeah, low key, yeah. <laughs> right? Yo, why did we do we should have talked to each other dude, before this? Yeah, we we could have had a man. nice yeah, SB Envy final, final, dude. It would have been yeah, a good we could have been chilling, bro. <laughs> That's no, dude, saying, I don't yeah. know if I would have wanted to go up against uh, confident Donk in finals, dude, because Donk in finals is a different beast. He's a I mean, beast, bro. Yeah, what's... with Dougie. Have you ever lost a final, Doug? The Crim 6 won. The Crim 6 finals. That, like, dude, that finals is a joke, bro. Like, that's the only one I lost. The one, the Crim. And I beat him twice, though. So I beat him twice, so he beat me once. But, like, the one he beat me in is a joke. It's an, Wait, honestly, which, like, I hate which one is, which, which one is that? PAX oh. East. PAX East. Wait, what? Was I the same? Wait, that's what I'm saying. Was that saying. Was was yes, that was that's what I'm saying. Oh, ghost pack. Wait, ghost packs. Ghost packs. Oh, dude, ghost packs. No, I don't mean to be weird. We were just a 
uh as a community we were talking at this point but this was like two weeks after champs nobody uh -huh. cared about the the pax event in ghost because it was literally immediately after champs so mm -hmm. i remember and being it wasn't there even my real team because I, I joined phase already and i was scrimming with phase every day yeah that I was the thing everybody was breaking up our team was in the midst of like making a change you got you mm -hmm. had just made a change it was like phase red and phase black or some I shit formal and proofy me, pro, me formal proofy yeah, was TK a team. had mm -hmm. just broken up so everybody going into it was just like okay complexity is going to win this like obviously exactly and they yeah. won it they won game yeah, they won. five and it's like that's my loss on my resume bro that's my one loss. it pisses me off dude it pisses me off so much <laughs> listen i will i honestly i will co-sign that 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 tournament was yeah, kind same, of for guys same. just same because balance, everybody was sort of in turnover. turmoil fans. remember the venue there wasn't even a venue it was <laughs> just in the middle of bro it was ten thousand people shoulder to shoulder yeah. everywhere man you can't even well, hear I anything i i won't i won't say that because i think that that is a you got to be able to turn up in any environment as a call of duty pro I'll be honest. I'm keeping a buck, bro. You got any environment? You got to final series whatsoever. I did not care about that, man. You can't say any environment because, bro, we had to play a champs match in a hotel, bro. Our teammates went out to put pajamas on, like. And looking back, looking back at that tournament, we needed to lock in, brother. Od, brother. Anyways, Doug, what is some? Yeah, speaking of that, so that's our story. Or the most ridiculous mm -hmm. um, situation we've been in at a COD tournament, uh, BL3 uh, World Championship. We had to play in a hotel ballroom. These guys were turned out of their minds, and obviously, our advantage against them is that we've played on land in front of a big crowd before. Well, we mm -hmm. lost that advantage, so obviously, it kind of sucks for you. What's like the biggest fugues moment you feel like you've had in an event before, where you're just like, "Damn, that sucked," or you know, just like a weird situation you had to navigate. I would say the only one that really stands out is UMG Philly. If you guys remember that event where there was some issue with the hotel or like the fire alarm or I, I don't know what oh, the yeah, issue yeah. was. Oh, it was freezing and we all yeah, got yeah, kicked it was out. So cold, right? Yeah. What was the issue again? That's the only thing that really stands out to me. Like, I, why I did we get kicked out? Details, bomb though. threat, maybe. I think it was a bomb threat. Yeah. I, I, it, my memory refreshes itself. And it was a That's small, like, it was like a hotel as well. It wasn't even like something mm -hmm. crazy, it was like some low key mm -hmm. venue. It wasn't anything crazy. And there was a bomb threat in the hotel and we all had to like go outside to the outside parking lot where it was freezing and we had to stay there for like an hour, right? Yeah, that was horrible. And we all got food poisoning. I remember that me, uh, Crowder, um, I think Goonjar, a bunch of people got food poisoning at that event because you remember the, the communal water that they had for all the players? Well, I guess that some was in that because we all got sick. That was an oh, event goodness. that I would like to forget. <laughs> Um, also, there's another one though that stands out. Uh, my very first event ever. So I won the national championship with the. I'm very fortunate to say that my first team I went to land with in BO1 was Vengeance, Virus, Virus and Mutation. Sinster. Now, like, Mutation was who we ended up winning nationals with for Sin, okay. but Virus and Vengeance, the guys I went to the first ever event in my career with, other guys that won the national championship with the same year. But the first event of that year, no one really talks much about this, but it was the craziest thing to me. And even to this day, it's the craziest thing I've ever had to deal with as a player in a tournament, which like I couldn't comprehend at the time. And I still, I can't believe how crazy it was. Um, we were looking so good at the event. We lost last map, final round 1v1 to Ix and Scumpy, who was like the best team. They won the event. You, they beat you in the finals. We, yeah. They literally beat us last map 1v1. And we felt so confident we were going to make the run and like win and beat the whole, win the whole thing. And then all of a sudden virus, our teammate virus got a stomach virus, like literally mid series at Saturday at the event, he was just going every other map, throwing up in the bathroom. And like, he was like our MVP cause he was frying versus leverage. Like he was playing so good. So we're like, oh my God, this guy's a beast. Like we didn't like, all right, let's go Tanner. Like, so like we're playing, like, I don't even know who it was, but we win the series like three Oh. And then the next day comes around, I'm thinking he's going to be better. He didn't play. Like, he just straight up didn't show up to the matches. He was like, wow. yo, I'm too sick. I knocked on his door at his hotel. He was in the bathroom throwing up. He's like, I can't play. And, like, me, Vengeance, and Sin, like, went to the venue. Like, what do we do? They're like, well, let's just play 3v4. And we're like, <laughs> okay. And I played, I played Fisher and John 287. And the first map was Havana Capture the Flag. And we went into halftime in Havana Capture the Flag in a 3v4 up 1-0 on land versus Fisher <laughs> and John. No one knows this, but, like, that's really what – and then we lost 3-0. But, like, that's – I got top eight. And I'm like, dude, we were the best team. I felt like we could have beat leverage and like win this thing. And I guess we saved it for nationals because the same guys won nationals. So like it made sense, yeah. I guess. But that was crazy, honestly. Like I'd never seen a teammate mid event have that happen to them. It was actually insane. You I can't what? believe you had the confidence to play 3v4 though, bro. Wait, like, Jay, we did that before? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's because like 
Yeah, I lagged out of my my entire internet blew up in my crib. So you guys had to play three. Listen, this is the old it. era. I don't listen, know how you do that, listen, bro. listen, we are old heads now because Doug's in here. This is the old head talk. Nowadays, people would not play that match. All right, listen, Hell Doug no. had to lock in. He had to play 3v4. Listen, that's that's typical, man. I respect that. I love the um, way you guys are talking about locking in because this is a huge thing in our culture with our team. It's like, shut the fuck up. No one cares. Like, are you going to win or not? Max. Like, that's mm. the bottom line. Nobody cares. Are you winning or not? Okay, cool. The stat Are you winning or not? Are you doing something that's hurting the process of winning? Stop it only do things that help winning that's it Thanks. like so that lock-in thing like i love hearing this from you guys because that's kind of like how our culture is with our team the most important thing man mm -hmm. um also bringing up your old teammates i just want to give a shout out to virus i don't know what he's up to now that guy was just before his time bro that guy was a nerd in game he would have thrived in the later years of call of duty he'd be like a cellium right yeah he'd he was like a, a nerd exactly that's a great comparison bro that kid was the way a he was monster. going about his life and everything yeah he mm -hmm. was very nerdy with that yeah he was the Super first nerdy. he was the cellium before cellium and no one knows about him like he's like he's like one of the ogs who was really really good and like, I, I would compare him in that era kind of like J-Cap, just like he's willing to do computer anything. Computer virus, but it's like Game Battles username, all caps, yeah. computer underscore A nerdier virus. J-Cap. Dude, that is a unit on the map, computer virus, <laughs> yeah. bro. <laughs> oh my God, bro. Um, all right, so let's see what else we, we got here. Before we get to the next topic, Jay, is there something else that you wanted to bring up? Nah, I just wanted to, you know, if, if you're gonna continue to play in Challengers, you see all the talent that you, that's currently out there. Like, you're not winning, at least right now, but you know, like, who your toughest competition is. So I just wanted to ask you, because so far throughout this year, it's been a lot of challenges players coming in and a lot of these guys finding success early on. Is there, like, a guy that stands out to you, potentially on your team, potentially not, that you think is going to be the next guy up? Yeah, who's next up? I mean, if you're looking for the stereotypical next up 18 year old and cracked prodigy simping a beezy on steroids, it's Snoopy. I mean, that's this the bottom line. Oh, it's Snoopy. This, this kid, is the guy you, you just him, picked up too, right? You watch him play and you're like, dude, you think you saw, like with Shotzi, he did that, right? Like he was like, oh my God, look at Shotzi. It's like, yeah, that's how I feel when I see Eric play. It's like, look at Where did Eric he come from? Man. That kid is gross. Yeah, I've been watching, I, it, I, I've been watching all these SND8s and stuff and he is just a demon in these SND8s, bro. If, I think he has it's hard to compare I think he has the best movement in the game I, he, like people say Shotzi and I understand completely why but I look at Eric and I'm like it's like a, it's like a pick your poison like do you want Shotzi or Eric like they're the same movement it's the same thing Shotzi has the, wow I mean Shotzi Wait, that's has high praise movement, right and just watch it it speak it's it's just his natural game like it is what it is like you watch the game and it speaks for itself just look at his stream look at how he moves around the map and you're like He's like, a, he's literally like a, a hybrid of Shotzi and Abizi. It's the way I look at his game. He looks like a Shotzi and Abizi hybrid. That's yeah. his game. When I play with him, it feels like a Shotzi and Abizi hybrid. I'm an AR. I go to my spots. I am like, okay, I go to this and I have this. This is the area you need to operate in. Okay. All right, great. Three, two, one, break. Here we go. Love right, that. He's weak. Stun. He's stunned. I just see in the kill feed, Snoopy, Snoopy, Snoopy. I'm like, great. I'm blocking here. They're there. Snoopy, Snoopy. Great. Okay, they're over here. <laughs> Snoopy dies. Pentagram gets three. Okay, great. Sean gets two. It's like, great. I'm still blocking, boys. Keep going. <laughs> yep. Rotating now. Yep. Got it. Snoopy, great job. You're on a 10 now. Keep going. Listen, man, yep. honestly. How did you find this kid, man? How did you find him? Uh, I found out the first time I found out about him was season one of the elite when he went to game five hotel search and destroy versus rocker Academy at the time rocker stock was extremely high. No one knew about Snoopy. I knew about infinite Rupert and Thresh. They were pretty good in Latin America. They weren't like top eight. They were like top 12 top 16. So pretty good. But you know, not in that like upper cusp. Then I see the Snoopy game five S and D just he just said, Hey, I'm Snoopy. And like you couldn't not watch it. It was like it was like uh who was it? It was like last night with Lonnie Walker the fourth on the Lakers when he just dropped just 15 from the fourth. 15, just going crazy, yeah. yeah. Like that's what Snoopy dropped. He dropped 15 on the game five S and D. And I'm not even kidding you. Every single round he ran at them with the sub and popped a two piece. Like every, literally he won like five, six, four or something. Ten rounds in a row, he ran at them and popped a two piece every single round. He had 15 kills, like in 10 rounds. Literally every round, I was like, dude. No player ever could play like this. How is he playing like this? Like, there's no world this is real. Like, who is this guy? So, like, I play against him a little bit, and <clears throat> that's the thing. Like, it's all about the team dynamic. So, like, when I watch him play, I think he's exactly what Boston Academy needs. We obviously lost Kyle. Kyle is nothing like Snoopy. Completely different players. 
but we have a Nate on our team, and Nate's extremely versatile, so Nate could be slow, Nate could be fast, Nate could be anything we need him to be. Eric is the fastest player in the game. There's no question about it. No one moves faster than Eric and Cod, and he's extremely calculated, aggressive, has an amazing shot, and uh, the only thing he needs to do is get his comms up, which he's just going to get naturally by playing with us every day. So, um, Bro, I cannot yeah, wait to watch y'all. I cannot the wait to watch y'all play. Like, that guy's going to leave you here pretty soon, Doug. Another one added to the list. That's like, I'm sitting there. Jay, I'm sitting there, right? Like, he's hitting me up. Eric's texting me, and he's like, yo, Doug, like, can you can you do me a favor? I'm like, yeah. He's like, yo, can you talk to my mom real quick? Like, she just, like, wants, like, to hear from someone from, like, Boston and, like, explain to her, like, what's about to happen, like, what we're about to do. I was like, okay, great. So I'm talking to his mom. She's, like, speaking to me in Spanish, English, like, a little bit of both, like, trying to speak English, but clearly some words that are getting misspoken. So I'm like, you know what? This might be easier if I speak a little bit more Spanish. I'm sitting here, like, an hour and a half. I'm like, and all I'm thinking in my head is, like, okay, your son's going to buy your mom a car, going to get your mom a house. Like, he's going to be in the league next year. He might even be playing for champs. Like, I don't <laughs> even know. Like, we'll see. Like, you know, it's, like, it's, so it's awesome. crazy to me. Like, this process is insane. And, uh, I, I just think very highly of everyone who plays here. And um, it's very exciting because I don't always look at the young talent either. It's not like a bias thing with me. Like, I don't really care about if they're young or old. Like, can you win? What's your mindset like? What's your preparation like? That's the most important thing. Like, what's your preparation like every day? How are you looking at things? What are you doing every day to be better? You know, like, there's a lot that goes into so, it. But there's no doubt about him, like, 100%. So, Doug, I want to ask, like, you've – a lot of the players you team with have went to the league – things like that uh and with snoopy you gave him some good gas there and honestly from what i've seen from him he's a monster um mm -hmm. and this is no slight to all the other people but does it seem like he's the best at least from the eye test uh mechanical skill is he the best yeah. of all those stop, people stop right there yes yeah that's it might be the yeah. best in cdl like yeah he's the, yeah no doubt hey There's right, no one i'm ready that could look hey. like him. I'm ready no to see this. Like I'm, I'm ready to see that. I, I know you guys placed with your last roster, you placed third at the Texas Challengers Open. Uh, and then yeah. the, the next Challengers Open is, is there one? At, there's one in Toronto, yeah? Is there a yes, in three weeks. Okay. So y'all, you guys will obviously be there. Um, is there anybody you're looking at as like the biggest competition going into that one? In North America, there's some pretty good teams. Um, the ultimate, like, highest level competition i believe is probably the frenchies with abuza if i had a guess maybe eric boom's team because they beat us last event but our team is different with eric than it is with kyle i'm also better now like when we had kyle and we got third i wasn't as good as i am now because i only ran the ar for like three weeks now i run oh, yeah. the ar for over two months and we have a really fast aggressive player and i have a lot more time in the ar so i know when to speed up and slow down and with eric i'm usually slowing down like if I have the least deaths on my team, I'm happy. If I have the most hill time, I'm happy. Don't really care about anything other than winning. But, like, I know when I look at all these POVs, I need to be very slow. I can't be fat. But I know when to speed up because I have the experience now. So, uh, yeah, I, I definitely have high expectations for our team. Um, I think all of us do. So, we just have to uh, go out and continue playing like how we do every day in practice. And everything will work itself out. Uh, and then, um, last question on challengers is, for challengers champs this year, uh, how does it work? You need to be top eight or in terms of points, like break down, are you guys in a good spot to qualify for that? Very good spot right now. So there's a few different ways to get in. I think it's a 16 team tournament, but mm -hmm. the top four NA seeds in terms of pro points qualify. Uh, so right now we're currently sitting at five because Nate didn't have many when we picked him up and Snoopy didn't have many uh, when we mm -hmm. picked him up either but that's fine uh we'll be okay like if we had kyle on the team still we probably i think we'd be the two seed in challengers in na mm. but obviously like kyle get called up snoopy didn't have as many points he was playing with a different team but obviously like we think he's going to be beneficial for long-term success we're like we could potentially be the two seed after this lead is over actually um and if you get top two in toronto you auto qualify for champs okay so if we just like if we if we get like top three in this elite and like top eight at toronto we auto qualify for champs how does and it work Doug, if somebody elite. gets if somebody gets grabbed and brought up to a pro team for like major five what happens to the status like say say you uh, lose the points you're screwed damn damn that's, that's, that that's tragic that's what i'm saying like dude we get close to winning oh. and then like before i could win my teammates get taken from me and then i have to like restart all over again 
That's why you got. We might have to air this episode a little bit late until after chance, because the way he was talking about Snoopy, he might be gone, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to wait. I was going to say the even in Boston, Jay. So he stayed in Boston. Oh, all right, good, good. See I was ya, even going to say it earlier. Uh, you know, we just went on to something else. But Doug, the way that you were describing like the players coming through and how Denz's approach and how like the academy team and main team is fostering so much talent, it seems like you've kind of taken on this like GM slash scout role. And you may not even have realized it just by you trying to win. You're essentially have become like a really good G, uh, assistant GM slash scout for Boston as a whole. Have you realized that? Oh, for sure. The, the way the way that me and Denz are doing it is actually like naturally so good. Like yeah, I don't even think it's been spoken. We haven't even spoken about it, but the way we go about it is so good because like we had to build familiarity with each other. So like I, I give him credit for coming into the CDL last year with the situation he was in. Because all the teams and players were basically set and signed going into Vanguard. Yeah, he had were. to figure out like who's next up and who's good. And I give him credit for their year. It wasn't obviously a win. They didn't win. They did get a top three. They got some decent placings. Like in the grand scheme of things for their first year in the CDL, it wasn't a bad year for Boston at all. For and sure. Look at all the other teams. To, right. And it goes down to like his decision making on who he picked up for that roster. So they had a lot of that roster still here right when i joined and like we slowly kind of brought the challenger guys in and the academy guys in but um we we kind of just like built a lot of trust over time because he really wanted johnny on the team last year and there was pretty obvious reasons like johnny looked filthy like johnny was gross mm -hmm. he wanted johnny on the team and i strongly went against it i was like nah we want kyle here and i think that was the first time he started getting trust in me because he was like set on johnny like 100 percent. and i'm just like Look, I see the vision with him, but he doesn't want to be here, and I don't want to convince him to be here. Like, he thinks he's too good for us. Mm -hmm. Let him do him. Like, I don't want this guy here. Look, I don't care what people think about me. Anyone who associates with me is going to the league. That's a fucking fact. Anyone who associates with me. There is no chance I'm playing with someone who I have a doubt in this situation they're going to be in the league. Anyone who joins this roster gets in the league. So Shawnee's going to be in the league. Ghosty's in the league. Beans is in the league. Kremp is in the league. Um, Pentagram's definitely going to be in the league. Snoopy's going to be in the league by tomorrow. Like, everyone who joins here is going to the CDL. And I knew Kyle was going to go. I wanted him. He was the best fit for the team. And Den saw it blossom in front of his face. And he's like, wow, this works really well. And then, like, when Ben got the call up to Boston, I was telling the team going into the Boston Challenger event, because we got top 16 at the event with Ben and Kyle. Me, Ben, Kyle, and Sean, we got top 16. I was telling my coach, I'm like, dude, I want to switch roles with Ben. Like, I want him to run a sub. I want to run an AR. Like, Ben's too fast. I'm too slow. This is stupid. We could easily win if I just switch roles right now. And, like, we obviously didn't do it. We got top 16. And I was like, dude, let's just get Pentagram because he's, like, the best sub player in Challengers. And I'll just run an AR. And then my team was like, yeah, we should do that. I'm like, yeah. And that's all it was, you know? So out, yeah. It all worked out. So it's like... I think when I did all that, because Dens was, and I was dropping like a point five, like people were memeing me because it's like, dude, I'm trying to run the new role. I don't know anything. Like new I'm role. literally watching, dude, I was watching so much VOD, trying to go to all the right spots, like doing it's so much time. Like I put so much time into it. Now I'm like, good. I'm definitely good. I'm fine. Like I'm big chilling now, but before there was a lot of uncertainty, a lot of insecurity, a lot of like um, confidence issues, right? Like it was yeah. tough to do it at the time, but you know, to stick through with it and to face that scrutiny and to see the other side and get great results, like to come out and get second and then get third. It's like, dude, I've only been doing it for a few weeks and there's a lot of struggles to it too. So um, I think that builds a lot of trust. So I think Den saw a lot of trust in me when I changed my role, got better results than we ever got. Everyone we're playing with is doing so well. They love all the players that come in. I think it just builds trust. And I think you got to be it to build the trust. So like that's that's like what i kind of said about going back to my roots like i don't care who the comp is in the league i don't really like cool dan ghosty's running the league right now scrappy's running the league right now like come on bro like no offense to them i think they're i think the word of them if i'm being honest no offense to any of them but like they're not me like i say that with the utmost confidence respect and slight ego you give me the ceiling whatever that ceiling is i dissect the ceiling and i exceed that ceiling i don't care what the ceiling is if it's shotzi if Bars. it's hydra cool that's great i love it let's let's go challenge me give me some give me some little you know things let me move them all around okay let me see where i fit into this equation boom that's my role this is what we do when we win and i beat them so like that's my mentality and i take it as a great challenge so i think there's some great talent in this league and great teams and i just can't wait until i'm in a situation that i'm happy with and i play against them because i know it's going to be fun Shout out Doug, man. I mean, honestly, <laughs> he's the man. He is the man. And I, and honestly, uh, I actually said this on broadcast about, um, 
right after the last Boston game, because obviously everybody, Boston's been on tip of everybody's tongue for a while, I said, I don't think enough credit has been given to that organization and how they've operated between the academy team, your squad, and the main team with all the talent that's been fostered there. So uh, glad I was able to talk with you about it and see how your guys' process actually was. Um, but Jay, you know what time it is, bro, the friendly you fire segment. It is time for the best part of the show, Doug. I'm going to let Jay handle it and kick this part off. All right, Doug. So obviously we're the Cockcast, but we're also Friendly Fire. We're the Cockcast yes, presented by Friendly Fire. So we got the little Friendly Fire segment. Basically give you two names of Call of Duty players from past tense. Now all in their primes and just give you two names that you have to choose between. All right, brother. So and you can okay. give us a, a, a reason as to why as well. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So Great. here we go. To start this one off, who are you taking? A naval or gunless? Primes. Gunless. Gunless. Oh, so, which in terms which, of winning, I might have to take a Nable though. Even though he's Prime uh, with four fingers, bro, like he's out there. No, so what's I Prime think, enable? I I AW enable? I'm taking a Nable based off me and how I play COD. I'm taking a Nable because I don't know if me and Gunless is going to work as well as I'd wanted to. But I think the world of Gunless is Prime. It's one of the best Primes in the game. But I think the way me and Nable could work in Nable's Prime would be better. You ain't never winning an S and D though, brother. But Gunless yeah, or enable? With it, with, with enable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if we're talking, am I, wait, am I comparing their individual primes? Because Gunless's individual prime is better than Enable's. Am I saying it in terms of comparing them to each other, or is it like who you think I so? I think A W Enable was this. Okay, so who I would want then, not who's better, right? Yeah, yeah it's yeah, who like, you who want to okay, team I would with. Want prime Enable yeah. then. I would want Prime Enable. Okay, okay, all right. So, that's a good shout. It's a good shout. Gunless is a great player too. He is. But Enable they won a couple champions. Gunless is prime is the best prime no outside of IW formal by far. Gunless you think so? Like right What's his there. prime? Yeah, what, IW or Dub Dub Two? Uh, Gunless. Dub Dub Two bar long barrel. Yeah. <laughs> bar long barrel. Yeah, he was, was <laughs> top twenty four losers to championship was the absolute best prime I've seen. I mean, player. that guy I was a problem. Champion. I'm not gonna lie, he was kind he of a problem. problem. <laughs> I want to argue. Kenny on the same team in that game. Oh my god, no! I won't imagine that. That's the year Jay, I retired. I'd be like, bro, there's nothing you can coach me on with this, Jay. Like, yeah, we got We got Ricky's like, stay alive. He's like, I'm taking it. <laughs> Ricky, like, damn. Brandon, nice new piece. Damn, Ricky, I can't stay alive, man. Like, a blast for a blast in there. Tweaking. All right, Doug. <laughs> like, tweaking. All right. All right, Doug. So, next up, bro. Next up, who you taking? Zuma or Saints? Oh. That's so Ooh. tough, bro. It's a hard one. I can't, I'm biased. I'm biased because I team with Nato. I'm taking Saints. That's a tough one, though. Tommy and I could have done numbers together, but I'm taking I Saints because I've done it with him. Both girls, bro. Yo, Yo, I feel like Nato could prime, still yeah? be playing, bro. Yeah, I feel, think, like Nato, I feel like Nato was probably one of the best players in Ghost, without question. Oh, my like, God, he was able to do. And then when I, when I team with Zuma was also in his rookie year through Ghost, he just had a lot of potential. And as you saw his career blossom as he continued to go on, like they were basically the same player. It's just Nada wasn't really the flanking type. Nada was the guy to challenge you right in your face. Tommy was known for the flank. So in my opinion, I don't really know. I, they're both good players, they're both great friends of mine. I, I don't have an opinion, but who you taking, Doug? Which one? Nada, because I won with him. I'm taking Saints. Okay. Okay, well, I'll respect that answer. I'll respect that. I won with both of them. So I think, I, do, yeah. I don't know. I think like Zoom, Prime Zuma was unbelievable. Like he was. AW Zuma at the yeah. end or like the end of Ghost Zuma. Like he was unbelievable. Nato, I just feel like he he was disgusting, unreal. Mm -hmm. He never got to unlock his like next, next level though because he, he was his yeah. own he enemy. He level in him too. He mm -hmm. did. He could have been the best, bro. Because if you talk yeah. about... I'm gonna keep it a stack right now, bro. From my perspective and being in this era, one of the people at the top, if you talk about Scump, Saints was the closest player to that play style and at times did it better than him. Just like yes. Scump had yes. a better work ethic and mm -hmm. was more willing to fit the role on the team. Like Nato, if he wasn't his own enemy, would have was as good as would have been as good as Scump for years, bro. He was yeah, unreal, absolutely. dude. Like and, and yeah, I don't X-ray vision with Gunny. He did. Yeah, he really did. Those were the two players I felt like played this played so similar. They were nasty. Mm -hmm. Um. All right, Jay. What's the next all one? All right, Doug. Who you taking, Doug? Who you taking? Attach or Priesta? Attach. Why? Prime Priesta's nasty, bro. Well, I never play with Preston, 
he also took my spot on the team in World War II over me. Damn. Um, <laughs> so I had to put him down. I sent him home at Birmingham before they won that championship together. I beat him. I sent him home. Yep. Uh, that felt really good. But attached because I wanted attached before he won champs in AW. I was willing to pay his buyout of $5,000 in denial. I won a cup with Attach with Slasher and Apathy when he was sick. Attach had like a virus and he was sick and I won the cup with ease. And I had two West Coast and one Florida and one New York side. My pink sucked and we still won it. I was like, bro, me, Attach, Slasher, and App could run shit. I would definitely play with Attach. Okay. I'd still play with Dylan to this day. I'd play with Dylan. I think I can wait, run shit with wait. Dylan. Is it, is it Dylan in the AR or is it Dylan in the sub? Which version? It doesn't matter. I think I can run through with him. I can run a sub. He can run an AR. I can run an AR. He can run an AR. He can run a sub. I can run an AR. I don't care. I got. I can win with that guy. I don't care. That might be the D and D duo that we've been waiting on. For quite I want good S and D players that have good discipline. I love his S and D and his D and D duo. That would go crazy. <laughs> That'd be nuts. All right, um, all right, Doug. Final one for me, and then Ed's taking over. Who are you taking? Motormouth Senior or Motormouth Junior? Ghosty or T Fell? <laughs> Ghosty, one hundred percent. Yeah, prime T fell yeah, 100%. in terms of being a motor mouth or like as a player. No, no, no as, as a, a player. player, bro. That's just a nickname. No, I was just giving oh. that little thing. Oh, I know, <laughs> I know, I run things with Dan. If I team with Dan, I can run things. So I'm playing with Dan. Me and okay. I never played with Fellow for that long, but me and Dan, I know I could be unstoppable if I'm gonna do it with him. Like, me and him could play with people and win. Like, so I'm taking Dan 100%. Okay, All right, okay. Now, this next one, an interesting one, Doug. Big Wake, Giga Wake, or Skies. Oh, that's so tough because me and Skies work really well together. And Joe's on Boston. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to think me and Joe could play really good together because he, like, does all the kills that I don't care to get. <laughs> like, I don't care about doing <laughs> all of them, but, like, they need to get done. So, like, go do that. Like, go get those kills, dude. Like, do your thing because, like, there's other stuff I want to go do now. But, like, I think I could work really well with Joe because he gets really consistent kills. And I think he's a little bit more consistent at getting kills than Caesar is, even though I love Caesar's game because it works well with mine. But uh, I think the ceiling with Joe could be really high. So I'll take Joe just because, like, if he's going to be able to consistently get the kills that his stats say, I can do all the other crap for us to win. Like, it's that Fair. easy for me. So I'll take Joe. <laughs> um, bet. I like that answer. Big wake is crazy, especially when he he's turns nuts. into when he turns into giggle wake. There's no stopping him, bro. He's no stopping. Wake, bro. He has a super <laughs> saiyan, bro. He's one of the, he's one of the few players who's always. Is he like saints in a way? Would you guys say he's kind of like saints in a way with yes. these like peaks? I, yes, I, I can see that with him. He's consistently solid, and then he just turns into the best player of all time for a map. And yeah. it's like and for some reason, what does it win? Though? Nameless. For yeah. some reason, every week, Nameless got a new nickname yeah. for Wake. It's like Giga Wake, Gigantor Wake. Like, it's so new. <laughs> well, he has to get his win now, though. <laughs> He's individually done so great. He has to get the win now, right? Here's the reason. Yeah, here's the reason the I game. give him so much gas, bro, is because you know those players in the past, like the Saints, like the Goonjars, like the guys mm -hmm. where you're just like, that guy's a freak, bro. Like, we'll, I, I'm so interested to see if he'll figure it out and learn how to like take it to that next He's level gotta get that and, win, bro. and get that happen. win you have to get that win to be He's to so be a superstar you got to get a win yeah you get you have to, to be a superstar because what big wake is right now if he doesn't win in the next year or two it's just kind of like how temp was with on his come up right because temp was kind of that exact guy same thing it's the exact same thing and it's just like then you're gonna find yourself in a tough spot um all right next one though prime j cap or r cities prime j cap Oh my God! You want to talk about J winning, bro? Bo one J Cap can win with J anyone he wants, bro. Anyone he was unreal. Headband J Cap, headband J prime Bo one J Cap. Give me that guy all day. That guy was elite, bro. <laughs> Even MW two J Cap was elite, bro. COD four J Cap was elite. I don't even know which one See, would have been his real prime. Me. You're not too old for me. I never featured any of those caps. I ain't come into Black Ops Two. Well, Doug Hell was on the. Doug was a P. You were a PlayStation. You were a PlayStation player in, in during that time, right, Doug? And like, uh, yes, yeah. So he was. A, there was two separate communities back in the day, Jay. There was the PlayStation community and the Xbox Live community. And Doug, mm. Doug was like frying over there, and then there was like people like me, J Cap, Pac Man, I was the and top stuff. Of the uh, PlayStation, and I was the yeah. top of the PlayStation. I know it was like was you. Me. You were over there. Pluto was over there, and then we merged communities. We're like, who are all these new people, bro? These guys are kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and uh, we got the last one. All right, it, me or study. Uh, I gotta say, Ant W. 
I mean, it's an easy Wait pick. A it was Actually, a lopsided one. It was Wait, a lopsided How many wins pick. you guys both got? How many wins you guys both got? Two I got five. Each? five? No, I got five yep. second places. I got one championship. <laughs> oh my god! Give me, give me Ant, just because I had so many more struggles. And granted, a lot of struggles came with you, Jay. But <laughs> Ant always gave me more headaches. Like whenever I played against you on different teams, I never really had issues beating you on different teams. Mm -hmm. But with Ant, I've had consistent issues beating him on different teams, and it's his, it's his play style was just. It's like, dude, why the fuck are you doing this, bro? Like, what, what the hell is this, man? Like, but it's working. So I'm like, dude, this guy would just give me problems, man. So, me and Doug you know never what? got like, to team, dude. It's so unfortunate. We almost teamed I, I, dude, a couple of times. In AW, me and Apathy needed two. I hit up you and j -Cap to team. And you guys said no. And then we picked up Slasher and Ace and won. It was such a bad decision, bro. <laughs> you guys oh. said, no, nah, you guys suck. I don't want to play with you. No, bad, I, I'll just go win with Slasher and Ace. Whoa, dude. <laughs> I mean, reflecting on that moment, Doug, I made the worst decision possible. Me and Merc were like, dude, all right, we got to make a roster change. So we dropped Clay or we dropped J-Cap because he was, we didn't think he was that good. And then we were like, fuck, we can get Saints and Zuma. We were like, those guys are godlike. This is a free ticket, top three, easily. <laughs> That's kind of what, what our mindset was like because they were so individually nasty. But obviously you got to have teamwork, bro. And we had negative teamwork, <laughs> did not work. So damn, in hindsight, man, that would have been the time, bro. That we would have been the ultimate delusional duo. <laughs> would have been so confident, bro. <laughs> Went into every series. But yeah, I mean, that was the end of the uh, the friendly fire no, segment. You had some insane ice, though. Insane ice under pressure. It said that you had five chips? Yes, sir. We got I-46. We got... Uh, that was when uh, in MW3, we had those two tournaments. Me, Dito, uh, Liar, actually. OG throwback. And Parasite won. He was good, too. He mm -hmm. was good. Unfortunately... That team never got to play against the uh, the optic team in that game. Those are the we were the two best teams of that game, but we never got to play against each other. Although I think we would have fried them personally. Obviously, Wait, you won G Finity as well with Cap Formal, mm -hmm. right? And what was the other one? We won season three championship right, that right. year. Right after right, that, right. Yeah. Uh, that was the the season three uh, MLG championship, and then we won. Uh, we stopped the four peat from complexity. Me, Embos, Ricky, and and Haggy. I rate that man. That's pretty impressive, and the Gfinity one's very impressive too. You guys were unstoppable at that event. In season three, the only team that could have beat us was Jay's team, but they lacked the focus and, and they weren't locked, and they lost yep. to TJ Halley and Spacely. No, no, Spacely I lost a few of those up there. Huh? Remember when Spacely beat EG at World War Two? Oh, you lost to Noble? Yeah, bro. We lost to Slasher, Diabolic, Troy Haikal. Yeah, I forgot who the force was. I, don't know I thought you Miyagi. guys lost Miyagi, the Space but... team. It was Miyagi. Nah, bro, it was. was. So check. Yeah, I was so check. I was upstairs playing Madden, bro. Like, that was a terrible, terrible time back in the day. I had a shitty ass mindset, bro. Like, Jesus. Yeah, you guys are the only team that could have challenged us because you guys were, were grinding those 2Ks. But yeah, uh, that was a, a good blast for the past. Um, mm -hmm. Dude, Doug, I, thank you so much for coming on to the show. I for feel real. like I learned so much about like your approach and you know, some of those questions we, we kind of went deep and stuff and and you were explaining like your mindset and I was like, Doug is really focused and you are on, truly on another level mentally than uh, than it was back in the day. And, and it's dope to see how the process is, how you guys are breeding talent into the league and, and they're finding a ton of success. So I tip my hat to you and I, and I hope you can find your way back into the league coming soon, brother. I appreciate it. I just think it's about just setting a standard because you see the standard with the league. You see the amount of hours people put in. So you just got to exceed the standard and set a new one. So uh, if you can't beat it, you got to join it and, and just make the culture yourself, right? Like no one wanted me. No one cared about me. No one wanted to help me out in any way. So I found out a way to help myself and get affiliated with Boston and they helped me. And now it's like, well, you're going to have to watch this show now because it's not <laughs> going to go anywhere, man. Like I promise you, like we work way too hard. We love the game way too much. We got too much good things going for it not to work out. So it's, it's a great, it's a great feeling to know you got good people and then you could take the good people and set good culture. And you know, you take and you tweak a little things you see around you and you're like, okay, we could use that there. Like AG yeah. cred in the, in the documentary behind the scenes, he's like, all right, I feel good getting it off my chest, but I'm not going to fully get it out of my chest until I see it in the game. And it's like, yeah, that hit good. Like, I like that. We're going to take a note of that. Oh, that's that a quote. Now. Good. Little things like that. Like, you, you got to take those little things and it's like, this is what Pred's doing. Okay. He's so scared of me challenging us too. Pred, like, you got really good gunning and camera movement, but I'm just going to outthink you. Like, I'm thinking about it like all those different little ways. Like, great. You have good gunny. I'm going to make that useless now. Like, I don't care if you have good gunny. You can yeah. just be useless because I'm just going to make you useless on the map because mm -hmm. you're thinking about it like, I want to use my gunny. I'm Pred. Cool.
now I'm going to know how to beat you. Great. Like I'm taking these middle mental notes. It's like, I got to study all this stuff. So set the good culture, get the right pieces, work really hard, have fun while you do it. Sorry for the rant. I'm just feeling really nice. And no. I, can't wait to go play right <laughs> I love now. it, bro. Doug, thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you for coming on to the show, bro. You are always a character without question. All your answers never tend to surprise me because that's just who you are, brother. I appreciate you for taking the time. Uh, and just let me know whenever, you know, I'm in New York or I'm like, let me go ride this damn jet ski of yours, bro. Like, let me come <laughs> over, bro. Shit, how far do you live from me? Are you in Queens? Bro, I, I swear, no, nah, no, nah, I'm in White Plains. So I'm probably like, what, 45 to an hour away from you? Just let me know whenever you're free. You bro. guys got to link up, bro. Knicks players. All the Knicks players live in White Plains. <laughs> yeah, I know. My boy used to, uh, he was like the door man for them when they lived in the trump towers oh that's a hike man yeah it's it's an hour drive so if you want to pull up you can pull up it's an hour drive for me right now hey just let me know just let me know yo doug listen last thing i'll say is bro if you win challengers champs you know how insane that would be for call of duty and for you personally bro lock the fuck in and win that shit because that will be unbelievable bro i cannot wait to watch it dude that would be i mean that'd be undisputed that'd be a movie Dude, last year, I'm not going to lie to you, man. Seeing that Exceeds team won that, there's no doubt we could have won that thing easily because that uh -huh. team could not beat us. I, I say it. that the utmost. I respect Caden being in the league and Carson being in the league, and I'm team with Car I love him. There's no world where that. If you ask those players, there's no world where those players would have beaten us. And I'm sitting here in Challengers still, and those guys got league spots like Brax on Florida, Exceeds on LAG, and I'm like, brother, I literally beat Exceed last year and Brack last year on land, and then I couldn't play them on land. This year on land, yeah like i don't want to talk too much because i'm just really over the top cocky with it but i see the vision so clearly and i'm just so excited to work every day like if it doesn't happen it is what it is but i definitely expect it to because of how hard we work and how confident we feel but i understand like not always everything works out in the way you want it to like sometimes you get had sometimes you get beat and there's some yeah. great talent out there but with that being said like let's have some fun right like that's oh we yeah play, so Hell yeah. You know what, Doug? Yeah. If you win Challengers Champs, I'll revisit this episode and I'll be like, I'm not surprised, bro, because it's a great chat, bro. Uh, once again, I yeah. appreciate you. Make sure uh, you guys leave five stars on this. If you're going to leave anything other than five stars, just don't watch again. Uh, much love. <laughs> Make sure you guys comment, like, subscribe. All of Doug's uh, socials will be in the chat below. And for those of you guys who only really watch the main CDL stuff, check out Challengers because that is where the best players are coming in from it's fucking okay, absolutely amazing and uh i'm hyped to watch snoopy and i know you guys are too so much love we'll see you in the next episode that was fire doug let's go I'm dog locked, bro i'm locked i'm gonna play some rank that was that was no. <laughs> yeah doug are you not getting these people banned live but yeah. i don't have uh, that movie.